Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is my hope and prayer that this video is actually going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I'm fine. Kisumu is also fantastic. Maybe you could let me know where you are watching the video from, the county or the country in case you are out of the republic. Ladies and gentlemen, something happened today which shocked me. The police raided the home of the former cabinet secretary for internal security, Fred Okengo Matiangi. And they did it broad daylight. And I was watching it on TV. And I was wondering whether whatever I was seeing on my TV was actually the raid at Fred Matiangi's home. Because we all know that Fred Matiangi was so powerful in this country that nobody would have imagined that just a few months after leaving power, the police would go for Matiang. Nobody would have imagined that. Nobody would have imagined that the people who used to provide the security to Matiang would actually go and raid his home. That confirms one thing, that power is temporary. Power is fluid. And it seems those who are in Kenya Kwanza never learned from Fred Okengo Matiangi and the rest because they claimed those people mistreated them. And according to the information which is outside there, the DCI are saying that the arrest, I mean the raid at Matiangi's home, is related to some CCTV footages. That they are trying to get the truth about uh, a story about uh, the purported raid of Fred Okengo Matiangi last time. For those who remember, I think it was last week. But for me, I don't want to get into the issues of CCTVs. The issues of whatever is happening. That one I leave to the police to do their investigations. I leave it to the lawyers to deal with them. And I leave it also to relevant authorities. For me, I'm going to deal with the political aspect of the raid. Because there's one thing which we can't run away from. That there is no way the police can wake up and go and raid Matiangi's home without express authority from a sitting president. The raid of Matiangi's home, in my view, was sanctioned by William Samuel Arapruto. Why do you think these guys raided the home of Fred Matiangi? In, in a manner they did. Because I saw Matiangi's gate being broken into. I saw the police condoning, putting some condon somewhere there and blocking journalists from going beyond certain part. Why do you think they raided the home of Fred Matiang? Because I don't think it's, a, it's about the CCTV. Let's assume it's CCTV. Because Matiangi, the last time claimed that the police wanted to, ra to raid his home, and uh, that did not happen. And he went to court. And even at, as, as late as, to, as today, the police and the Matiangi's lawyers were in court over the issue of the CCTV footages. And the court declined to grant the police the orders to go and search Matiangi's home. But they still went there. Why do you think this is happening? What do you think is really happening? For me, if you ask me, number one, Kenya Kwanzaa government is laying the ground to arrest Fred Okengo Matiangi. That is the reality. And don't be cheated. In politics, nothing happens out of mere coincidence. Everything is normally planned and executed with an objective. When the story of uh, Fred Matiangi's raid came out or came up last week, personally, I knew there was something behind it. So these guys went to Matiangi to look for CCTV. Assuming uh, Matiangi, in my view, had those CCTVs and he doesn't want to give the police. Do you think they can still find the, the, the CCTV footages now? Probably they've been removed. If the data was stored somewhere, probably they've been chattered away. So these guys are laying the ground to arrest Matiangi. I'm looking at the attempted arrest. 
I am now getting convinced that what happened previously is that these guys wanted to arrest Matiangi. But because Matiangi, Matiangi has people within the security system, because of Uru Kenyatta, that time it was alleged that it is Uru Kenyatta who advised him on what was going to happen and how to deal with it. So Uru Kenyatta, according to, this, to the sources, thwarted the previous attempt by raising some uh, alarm. So he, he, he called the lawyers who went and camped. Actually, they preempted the arrest. Called the lawyers who went and camped at Matiangi's home. Then they went, leaders went there. Matiangi himself raised the alarm. Raila Odinga went there. And because it was at night, the police had to chicken out. So for me, now they have a reason. Because even at that time, I remember these guys claiming that uh, they are investigating Matiang, but that it has not reached a point of arresting him or doing anything. So for me, these guys want to arrest Matiang, and now they are laying the ground. Assuming they found Matiang at home. Today they would have arrested him. So that's number one. Number two, I also tend to think that there is a strategy to force Matiangi to support Kenya Kwanza government. I'm getting convinced. But Matiangi is not willing to do that. Remember, after the last election, Matiangi was given some job internationally at the UN, I think. He didn't take it up. As things stand today, the biggest headache of uh, William Ruto and Kenya Kwanza is Uru Mugai Kenyatta. Because Uru Kenyatta has the money, is actually the center which is holding Azimio. And Uru Kenyatta had one of the most dependable individuals around him, who was Fred Okengo Matiangi. So the idea is, you arrest Matiangi, force him to, to join Kenya Kwanza. Once you succeed in forcing him to join Kenya Kwanza, then Uhuru is left there hanging. I'm sure if Matiangi were to confess that he's now supporting Kenya Kwanza, nobody would be going to his home to arrest him. I'm 100% I'm sure. So these guys are just trying to force Matiangi to join Kenya Kwanza. And they were disappointed, really, when Matiangi went to visit uh, jo, the late George Magoha's family. And the way he spoke, that's actually what ignited all this. Matiangi spoke defiantly. So these guys are now going for him and they want to force him. Because if they don't do that, they, they fear Uhuru will team up. Matiangi will then now join politics. And uh, probably if, if he's given space, he might rally the Gusi against the government. So they want to force Matiangi to join government. If Matiangi was just someone uh, someone else, probably would have been uh, part of Kenya Kwanza as we speak. So that's number two. Number three, and this is also what I believe, that a coded message is being sent out to Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta by Kenya Kwanza government. You know, William Ruto wants Uhuru Kenyatta to exit politics. The other day, Uhuru Kenyatta told them, you can take even the retirement benefits. William Ruto is taking over his party. I'm told he's planning to install Sabina, Sabina Chege as the new party leader in Jubilee. Sabina Chege is going to replace Uhuru Kenyatta. But Uhuru is still saying, no, you can even take your African Union job. Is going to participate in politics. Uru Kenyatta is still defiant that Raila is his leader. So a message is being sent to him that we can come for you. The day you will see Matiangi getting arrested and arraigned in court, that is the day you will know that William Ruto will be headed to Gatundu South to pick one man, Uru Muge Kenyatta, to court. So Uru Kenyatta is being told that if you can arrest some of the people who are more powerful in your government, what about you? They are paving the way for you. Number four, in my view, this is just a revenge mission. You know, Rikethi Gashagwa has told us 20 times how the police went to his home, broke doors, which we never saw, from Mastim in underwears, which we never saw. How police went and raided. Rigabi Gashoga was even telling us in church 
last Sunday that the police went and raided Ndindi Nyoro using 500 police officers. And I was like, even if you are lying, 500 police officers, that number, how many vehicles were there? So this case are on a revenge mission. They want really to frustrate Matiani by revenging. Anybody who frustrated them, I don't know why they are still sparing Karanja Kibicho because there's no way you can target Matiangi and leave Karanja Kibicho out. There's no way you can spare Matiangi, you can go for Matiangi and spare Uhuru Mge Kenyatta. These guys were actually partners. So for me, this is just part of the revenge mission of this gentleman. I don't know what you think, but number five, I also tend to think that William Ruto is actually testing or gauging the reaction of the Kisi or the Gusi com community. How are they reacting? Because they are yet to arrest him. They just made those attempts to the home, left. So they, they just went, broke the gates, broke the doors. Matengi was not there. They left. How is the Gusi community reacting? That is something they are testing. So that if the reaction is favorable to them, then they'll go ahead and execute the plan. If the reaction is going not to favor them, then they're going to forget about any attempt to, to arrest Matiangi. So for now, what they're doing, they're just basically trying to gauge the mood of the Gusi community. And I'll be following this. Tomorrow I'll make some calls to the Gusi community. And lastly, I also tend to think that probably the police are keen, I'm not saying this is the truth, but I'm saying they maybe they are keen on getting the actual, what really transpired, who went to Fred Matiangi's home. Because the police might assume that Matiangi is lying, while in real sense, people went there, which means life of Matiangi is in danger. So they might be genuinely, the police might genuinely be seeking for the truth that, okay, they've interviewed the, the, the soldier, you know, they've, uh, they, at the gate, they've interviewed a few people, and these guys have confirmed to them that maybe there were people who came here. So they want to know, because they might believe, or they believe that, it, that those people were never part of them. So who are they? But there's other possibility that these guys are trying to get the CCTV footages to tamper with evidence. And that's normal. It has happened before in this country that something like this happens. You rush to the CCTV, you get the footages, you go and tamper with them. So I don't know what to think and I don't know how this whole thing is going to turn out. But for me, let us wait and see how it's going to turn out. And uh, by the way, if you've watched this video up to this place, please just mark yourself, yourself present. And also, there's this new channel which uh, I started. Really, I want it to reach a thousand. It can't reach a thousand without your support. I know there are people who are joining from outside because what we do there is totally different from politics. So I have a young boy who is uh, very good at online stuff. So he's taking a bit of lessons here and there. And I know two people or three who are already appreciating whatever they are learning from there so please just check out tip master you will get the the, the videos there and uh, i'm also going to share the link in the description and also i'm going to pin the link to the channel in the first comment so you just check it out click it subscribe once we hit a thousand bob the young man will start at least he will start getting a some hundred dollars monthly for, for a start which can push him i don't know what you think thank you guys and we are going to do another analysis probably later today if time will allow goodbye